Um, welcome all to the Microscopy Conference 2021 um, and thank you for attending today's presentation um, about uh, heating experiments um, with an in situ stage combined with EDS and the advantages of WDS. Um, my name is Nalan Kalyon and I'm working for EDAX as Applications Engineer for EDS. Um, you can easily recognize from the topic um, that the content um, of the speech acts about the temperature behavior um, of materials with complementary characterization of the material um, at different temperature ranges. Um, the heating experiment um, was performed with an in situ heating stage from Gatan. And for the EDS analysis, an EDS detector from EDAX was used. Um, the results um, of the measurements were summed together. Uh, another technique um, for doing characterization on materials um, is possible with WDS. The difference between EDS and a WDS is an interesting field um, to mention and compare the methods. Um, additionally, talking about the advantages of WDS is a point in this talk. <coughs> um, I will go through all the themes for showing you what is possible with the instruments um, I used. Um, I performed the analysis in the SEM from, in the SEM from Zeiss. Uh, it was a Sigma 500 um, VP. Um, where the heating stage um, was installed and the EDS detector was mounted. Um, I have used the Murano in situ heating stage um, from Gatan and the Optan Elite Super EDS detector. Um, Gatan um, has a different products for the TEM and SEM application from preparation tools up to imaging and spectroscopy instruments. One area in the huge palette of the products are in situ stages. Um, many metallurgical and material science studies benefit from direct observation uh, of specimen heating inside the scanning electron microscope. Um, for these experiments, uh, the Murano in situ heating stage was used. Um, this stage has many advantages um, to obtain um, results uh, regarding different kind of behavior due to the temperature. <coughs> um, but before talking about application, um, I will talk about the benefits and specification of this system. Um, the rapid heating and cooling, the option of using uh, gas injection, PC-based temperature control and the water-cooled module are benefits of this system. Um, you are able to use um, temperature ranges from ambient to 950 degrees with a stability of plus minus um, 0.5 degrees. Um, you can use samples with a size of 4.5 to 9 millimeters in X and Y direction. Um, in Z direction, um, you have to be careful um, and have to have in mind that um, by using a shield, you are limited in the Z axis. So the sample size in Z direction with shield, with shield um, is uh, 1.5 um, millimeters and without shield at um, approximately 3 millimeters. Um, there are two different sample holder for the Murano heating stage. Um, one is the flat and the other one, the tilted one. Um, um, above you can see the flat sample holder and underneath on the right edge, um, you can see the tilted one. Um, the different um, sample holder can be used for different applications like for EDS or for EBSD. Uh, on the bottom uh, of the slide, um, you can see the shields which are used for the heating experiments as one uh, has a hole 
and one has an open space um, which is used more for the EBSD analysis, but you can also use it for um, EDS analysis. The shields are necessary to protect the pole piece from heat radiation as you will um, perform the experiments at um, higher than 400 degrees. Um, the Murano heating stage uh, enables phenomena such as phase transformations, recrystallization, grain growth, um, oxidation uh, to be dynamically observed during heating. Um, to add catalysis uh, reduction, uh, reduction or oxidation reaction, gas injection is facil facilitated um, via an optional capillary ejection to the sample. Um, the steady uh, improvement of our system is in our interest. Um, so it is an ongoing process uh, for enhancing fast um, EDS analysis with best data quality, a high energy resolution and a high light element performance. This is realized with our hardware, with our CMOS technology, the silicon drift detector, the ultra thin ceramic uh, window and the extensive chip. Regarding these parameters, we obtain the best quality for data processing. The fast data processing is feasible with the 64-bit um, multi-core processor. Um, in the right bottom of the slide, um, you can see the front side um, of the detector in his um, single parts. Uh, in addition to the collimator, we have the ultra thin silicon nitride detector, a uh, detector window with a supporting grid, the detector ship, uh, which is placed on a substrate, and the Peltier cooled electronics. All this module is vacuum tight, so any additional absorption is not possible. Um, the processing um, of the measured X rays depends on the detector type and uh, the speed of the electronics. Uh, the ceramic window um, has a high transmissivity and ensures a high amount of low um, energy X-rays. Um, after the X-rays passes through the ultra thin silicon nitride window, um, they reach the silicon drift detector. These information are measured with the STD and are then analyzed with the CMOS electronics. With this processing, speed increases enormously and ensures coincidentally the best energy resolution. Um, the sequence and the, the ideal uh, design of the electronic increases the count rate with the energy resolution and enable the low noise and fast analysis of data. The used EDS detector um, is an Octane Elite Super, um, our high-level product. This detector is motorized, um, so an easy handling um, through the software is possible. The 70 square millimeter ship allows detecting a high number of counts uh, with a resolution of the manganese car alpha at 125 electron volts. Um, APEX is ADAC's premier software program for collecting and analyzing um, EDS data and the compositional characterization of materials. APEX ensures high quality, accurate results and increased productivity with uh, its easy to use interface, live demographical display and simultaneous review mode analysis. Um, for the measurement I performed, I used the APEX software for analysis um, of the results. So, um, before I will present the results of the study, um, I want to show you um, the starting uh, state of the experiment. Um, for the research, I choose um, a material, um, titanium aluminum, and investigate the heating behavior at specific temperature ranges and analysis parameters. Um, but first of all, I want to share um, the chemical composition and crystallographic properties um, 
soft alloy, um, the alloy uh, titanium aluminum is composed of titanium, aluminum, and niobium, and traces of boron and carbon. The composition uh, in atomic percentage is 50% um, titanium, 54% aluminum, and 5% um, percent, uh, niobium. Um, the interesting about the alloy is um, that the alloy is um, composed of two different um, phases. One is the titanium-free aluminum, um, which crystallizes um, in the hexagonal crystal structure. And the second one uh, is the titanium aluminum with the tetragonal um, crystal structure. And you can see um, above uh, the hexagonal structure of uh, titanium uh, three aluminum and the tetragonal phase um, um, on the edge, uh, the titanium aluminum um, phase. Yeah. Um, the procedure of the heating um, is drawn graphically and shows the steps of heating. The x-axis represents the time and the y-axis um, the temperature. Um, you can see three different uh, colored curves. So um, the uh, orange, orange curve um, um, is set to uh, or represents the set points or the set points. Um, the blue curve shows the me shows um, the measured um, temperature, and the gray curve the regulated power of the temperature controller. Um, the temperature was uh, increased in 10 degrees steps uh, until 100 degree. When reaching 100 degree, the step size um, uh, was increased to 50 or to 100 degrees. By reaching 400 degrees, the step size was decreased um, again to 10 degrees until 400, uh, 440 um, degrees. After every single heating step, the SEM image was collected uh, and an EDS mapping or an EDS spectrum was acquired. So, um, the parameters uh, for the EDS analysis um, were selected with an acceleration voltage of 20 uh, kV, a magnification of 635, a resolution for the EDS mapping of 512 uh, to 400 pixel with 16 frames, a dwell time of 200 microseconds with a detected count rate of uh, 43,000 counts per second. The EDS mapping take 12 minutes and during the elemental analysis, oxygen, silicon and uh, iron um, were detected. But for further analysis results, uh, the elemental traces were, no, uh, were, were ignored. Um, so uh, the SEM image or the SEM images uh, are collected after uh, every single heating step. And these images are put together as a video um, to see if there are difference, um, differences on the surface by changing the temperature. So um, I will play the video and we will see what uh, will happen during the heating process. Okay. Now, play again. So um, you can uh, see a drift in the image, um, and this drift is related to the temperature, means by increasing the temperature, we obtain a shift in the image. Um, so, um, the EDS spectrum of the material uh, was collected at ambient uh, temperature um, to check um, if the quantitative analysis fit to the theoretic um, value. 
The elemental analysis uh, shows the elements aluminum, titanium, and niobium with an atomic ratio of 54 aluminum, 50, uh, 54 uh, aluminum, 50 titanium, uh, and 5 niobium. Uh, elements like silicon, oxygen, iron, boron, carbon are detected also in this um, EDS spectrum, but for further analysis ignored. Um, and the theoretic composition matches to the measured results. And here um, is the quantitative um, results for um, the spectrum. So, um, with this slide, um, I will go through the EDS um, mappings acquired at selected temperatures. Um, the first EDS mapping was performed at 40 degrees. Um, the element map overlay of the analyzed um, of the analysis, the spectrum and the quantitative analysis is demonstrated here. Um, we can see again the quantitative uh, composition uh, which matches um, to the theoretic number. The increase from ambient uh, temperature to 40 degrees doesn't affect the quantita quantitative results. Um, the single uh, element maps are shown here. Um, and the first map is the CPS map uh, where we can get uh, topographic information about the surface of the material. Um, the map of boron and carbon uh, uh, are or is distributed in the region where the particle um, is located. Uh, and aluminum and titanium, the titanium map shows a homogeneous distribution. And you can see in the map of niobium that niobium is moistened in the scratches and is also distributed homogeneously um, on the surface. Um, this material contains two phases, as I have mentioned before, um, the titanium rich phase, which crystallizes in the hexagonal crystal structure, and the titanium aluminum with the tetragonal structure. And the phase map shows different colored regions. And the interesting regions are the blue and the red one. The different coloring of the phase maps shows a difference in the titanium aluminum ratio. To prove the compositional um, difference of the detected phases in the software, the spectra of the single phases were extracted and the quantitative results um, analyzed. By extracting the spectrum of the red phase, you obtain a spectrum with the peaks of aluminum K and titanium K line in the nearly same height. When the spectrum um, of the blue phase uh, was extracted from the phase map, from the total um, phase map, the height of the aluminum and titanium K lines varies. This is an indication for difference in the composition um, of titanium and aluminum. The exact determination of the different phases was done by the quantitative analysis. Um, I figured out that the quantitative analysis um, of the red phase and the ratio of titanium and aluminum fits to the hexagonal phase and the quantitative analysis of the blue phase matches to the tetragonal phase. The red and the blue phase uh, contribution uh, was nearly 50 to 50 percent. Um, and now um, or to see um, if the temperature variation influ influence the spectrum, the phase and or the surface, we will have a look uh, on the results at different temperatures. Um, and I will start uh, or go through uh, the temperature at 150 degrees. Um, the spectrum uh, at 150 degrees and the quantitative analysis um, shows the same results um, as the previous one. The element maps of the detected elements are overlaid uh, in the image um, on the right. 
Um, also, the single element maps uh, for the measurement at the mentioned temperature are shown on this slide, and there is no difference between the single element maps um, at 40 degrees. Um, the phase mapping uh, at 150 degrees and the extract extracted um, spectra with the related phases of titanium aluminum Composed materials um, are shown in this slide and matches to the results um, which were, were acquired at um, 40 degrees. So um, the ADS analysis um, at 250 degrees or the results um, of the uh, analysis um, are shown here. And the aim of uh, regarding the results at different temperature um, is related um, to notice differences in the chemical structure um, and in the chemical composition of um, this uh, material. And uh, the spectrum of uh, the alloy at 250 degrees um, uh, shows um, no change. Uh, also, uh, the single element maps uh, at 250 degrees with the light elements boron and carbon, and the transition metals titanium and niobium and the metal aluminum um, don't show any um, difference to the other ones or to the others uh, acquired at the different temperature. And um, by obtaining the two phases uh, in this material, it is again possible to extract um, this uh, detected phases and the red and blue phases cor corresponds um, to the titanium-3 aluminum and titanium aluminum as mentioned uh, in the beginning. So now again, the results um, at uh, 350 degrees um, so not um, any changes or any difference um, in the in this um, analysis and this quantitative analysis and in the spectrum and also no change in the single element maps and the phase mappings also doesn't uh, show any change in the chemical composition. Um, the mapping results uh, at 40, 150, 250 and 350 degrees for the ADS spectrum, quantitative analysis, the single element maps and discovered phases demonstrates um, all the same, um, means the material is stable and, the homogene and uh, is homogeneous, uh, due to the change of the temperature. Um, the chemical composition and the detected two phases um, show no variation um, by increasing the temperature. So um, I have published uh, now the results in the slides before and showed uh, that uh, two phases were found um, by the software automatically. Um, the one phase belongs to the hexagonal um, titanium-3 aluminum and the other one to the tetragonal titanium aluminum. The composition of the received products matches to the quantitative results. Um, the function which is used in the software is called smart phase mapping. This option allows the determination um, of phases um, with different compositions. The starting point um, for determination is the collecting um, the EDS phase map. The different phases um, are then um, extracted by regarding the variations in the component uh, peak intensity of the total EDS spectrum. So one single phase map can clearly describe the overall chemical composition of the material and the software visualizes um, the different phases by color coding and give the specification of the 
uh, percentages of these phases referring to the pixel. Mm, so I want to compare uh, in the slide the known uh, methods, uh, analysis methods to the smart phase mapping. Um, so um, we know uh, different methods to characterize, characterize um, materials uh, in terms of um, their chemical composition. So some well-known methods are, for example, the EDS, um, the elemental mapping and the X-ray powder diffraction. Um, both EDS analysis and element mapping do not make any statement about the phase composition. EDS analysis uh, is a precious method to, to determine the element uh, composition. The element mapping um, can provide a visual representation of the elemental distribution. And with X-ray powder diffraction, a clear phase analysis can be carried out. But the disadvantage here is the X-ray powder diffraction is associated um, with an additional and usually also time consuming sample preparation and bulk materials are not suitable for the measurement. In order to obtain a good result and detailed phase composition, the three methods described above can be combined. Thus, EDS analysis, elemental mapping and additional X-ray uh, powder diffraction can be performed uh, on the sample. However, this means that obtaining the information um, will be uh, very time consuming as different techniques are used. This is shown um, in this image on the left path. Um, how, however, um, there is a second possibility uh, to obtain the information without combining different methods. And this is the smart face mapping. And this method can be used uh, to obtain information such as the elemental weightening, uh, its spatial distribution and the face uh, composition. This uh, saves a lot of time and the characterization of the complete material is done by only one method. Um, the real advantages of the smart phase mapping, besides saving time and using a single uh, method, are that the phases and the element maps are acquired simultaneously and automatically. Um, the fact that a quantification and spectra are obtained both at the whole analysis area, but also at user-defined locations or even from defined phases. So no additional sample preparation is required. Um, the nature of the sample is preserved. Since a simultaneous recording of phases and quantitative results um, are obtained, um, the content of the information which is um, received or obtained is therefore uh, high. In addition to the respective element maps, the counts per second maps are also recorded, which um, plays a major role in the representation of the topographical effects and provides another source of um, information. Um, so now um, the EDS analysis and the heating experiments um, were performed um, till 450, 450 degrees. And in this slide or in the upcoming next slides, I want to go more in detail with the EDS spectra of the heating experiment. Um, to remind, I increase the temperature from room temperature to 100 degrees and 10 um, degree steps with, uh, with obtaining eight spectra. And in this uh, image, you can see that the overlaid spectra sh uh, shows no um, change in the spectra. Uh, therefore, um, no um, change in the chemical composition. So the spectra of um, 
150 degrees, 250 and 350 degrees were also required and overlaid uh, in this graphic. Um, by the first look, there seems uh, not to be a change or a difference in the spectra, uh, but by zooming into the peaks um, of aluminum and niobium, there is seen a small change uh, in the EDS spectra at 350 degrees. So the peaks get wider, uh, but uh, the chemical composition again um, does not show any change. So um, by considering uh, the spectrum collected at 400 and 410 degrees um, compared to the three or to the one which was acquired um, at 350 degrees, um, a shift of the peaks is seen clearly um, due to the shift which becomes more by increasing uh, the temperature. An additional peak at 400 and 410 degrees is detected. Um, the height of this peak uh, increases by um, increasing the temperature. Um, this peak is assigned to visible light, which ensure that the peak position of the elements shifted. Um, to see um, more the difference and the formation of visible light, um, only the spectrum uh, at 400 and 410 degrees um, were overlaid and demonstrated. Um, the significant shift is seen clearly in this um, two overlaid spectra. So um, in this spectrum, um, the overlay of the collected measurements at 410, 420, 430 and 440 degrees are shown. Um, the red spectrum represents the results uh, at 410 degrees. Um, in this spectrum, you can see the peaks of the elements which were detected, but additionally, the peak um, of the visible light is uh, occurred. At 420 degrees, the peak of visible light increases extremely, and a, a part um, of the shift of the spectrum, the peak height decreases. Um, regarding the spectra at 430 degrees and 440 degrees, the intensity of visible light is that high that the peaks um, of the elements are relatively no more visible. Um, to compare um, the spectra and uh, see what effect the increasing of the visible light and the saturation of the detector has, um, I have loaded um, only um, the spectra of 420, 430 and 440 degrees. An indication for detecting the visible light was also seen by um, increasing of the count rate. Um, the starting point of this value was 43,000 counts per second. At 420 degrees, this number increases to 50,000 counts per second. At 430 degrees, uh, the count rate was at and 90,000 uh, counts per seconds, and at 440 degrees, um, uh, um, uh, by 105 uh, oh, million counts per second, and the dead time uh, was by 88 percent. Um, voilà. Next slide. Now. Um, to check uh, if the experiment was not failed or gave any artifacts um, and also to prove that uh, at a specific temperature we are no able to do EDS measurements without any um, additional tool. I have um, acquired or I have collected um, another um, or I did another um, heating experiment. Um, I um, did uh, another heating experiment with a steel sample and uh, the parameters for the EDS um, analysis uh, were set um, um, as seen uh, on this slide. 
So um, an acceleration voltage um, of 15 kV, a resolution of uh, 512 by 400 pixels with eight frames, a dwell time of 200 microseconds uh, with a count rate of 24,000 count per seconds. Um, and the heating steps um, were performed um, in 50 degree steps till 390 degrees and were then increased uh, in 10 degree steps and stopped at 420 um, degrees. So now, um, again, um, after every single heating step, I um, collected the SEM images and um, these SEM images were put uh, to a movie. So again, I will play um, the movie and we will see if there is any change um, um, yeah, acquired after uh, the heating process. So we can again um, see a shift uh, in the SEM image by um, increasing the temperature. And this phenomena was also obtained by acquiring the measurement with uh, the titanium aluminum uh, alloy. Um, the EDS analysis of the steel sample uh, at room temperature was collected. Um, a part of chromium, manganese and iron, elements like oxygen, aluminum, silicon, titanium, cobalt and nickel are part of the material. And the quantitative analysis was um, simultaneously performed and to have now a deeper look into the sample sample uh, or into the um, yeah into the behavior of the sample at different temperatures um, I will demonstrate the spectra of uh, this material. Um, the heating uh, experiment was performed in 50 degree steps until 350 degrees. So the collected eight spectra were overlaid and shown in this image. And the spectra acquired uh, at different temperatures didn't show any change in chemical composition. So by regarding the spectra at uh, 350 and 390 degrees, we can see a clearly shift and also um, the peak of a visible light at 390 degrees. So by increasing the temperature to 400 degrees and performing the EDS measurement, as assumed, we receive a shift in the spectrum and see an uh, increase um, of the peak uh, of visible light. Now um, on this image I have added the spectrum of um, which was collected at 410 degrees and so here we can see that the peaks of the elements decreases and shifts. Um, so at this graphic we can see that by adding the spectrum uh, collected at 420 degrees the peak of light is only visible. Uh, the overlay of the spectra acquired at 450, 390, 400, 400 trend and 420 is summed in this image. And the intensity of visible light is that high that peaks uh, of the elements are relatively no more um, visible in the spectrum of 420 degrees. An indication um, for detecting the visible light is also um, seen um, in the counts per second, uh, in the count rate, sorry, in the count rate. Um, so the starting point was, as mentioned before, 24,000 uh, CPS. And at 400 degrees, uh, the number increases to 40,000. At 410 degrees, the count rate was at uh, 100,000. And 
at 420 um, degrees at uh, 1.5 million counts per second. And again, at that time of 88% um, was reached. Um, to compare um, the spectra and see what effect the increasing of the visible light um, and the saturation of the detector has, um, I have loaded um, um, only the spectra of uh, 40, 10, and for, for 410 and uh, 420 degrees. At 410 um, degrees, signs of peaks of the material are visible, but at 420 degrees, um, only the peak of the visible light is detected. Um, to sum the experiment of the steel sample, I can say um, that the material was stable and homogeneous and didn't show any changes in the chemical composition. Um, for comparing the results um, of titanium, aluminum, and the steel, so depending on the investigated material, the effect of the radiation of visible light um, during the heating experiment changes. Um, means for titanium, aluminum, um, the detector was blind for the analysis at 430 degrees, and for steel, uh, for the steel sample at 410 degrees. Um, now uh, to compare uh, the results uh, I performed in the SEM, I will show an experiment done uh, on the STEM in the Max Planck Institute in Mülheim. Um, the experiment was performed in an STEM uh, from Hitachi, a 200 kV machine with cold field emission gun. Um, the use heat used um, heating in, in situ in heating in situ um, holder uh, was uh, from Gatan and it, the stem uh, was on the stem uh, an octane T ultra was mounted. Um, the temperature um, of the heating experiment uh, was increased in 50 degree steps uh, until 250 degrees. Uh, when reaching 250 degrees, the step sizes were decreased to 10 degrees until 280 degrees. And after every single heating, uh, the EDS spectrum was um, collected. Um, the investigated sample was a catalyst, um, a platinum on titanium oxide. So the overlaid seven spectra acquired at the different um, temperatures shows no change in the EDS spectra. Um, and by adding the results at temperature from 260 to 280 degrees, the visible light um, was detected. And it was the first time detected at 260 degrees and increase, increases um, with the temperature at uh, 280 degrees. And there only the visible light uh, was, um, yeah, was seen or was visible. And the count rate arises um, from 260 to 500 counts per second. Um, with um, detecting the light uh, on the STEM uh, confirms that the heating experiment combined with EDS can't be performed with only a naked EDS detector. Also, um, what we have seen in the SEM uh, with the results which were, which were performed in the SEM. Um, now, um, um, I want to make a switch to another technique which is gladly used in combination with EDS spectroscopy. Um, it is a WDS. For using this method, a wavelength dispersive, wavelength, uh, dispersive uh, spectrometer is used uh, with characteristic X-rays that are generated by individual elements to um, enable quantitative analysis. Um, to be measured at uh, spot sizes as small as a few micrometers. And these capa 
capabilities provides fundamental uh, quantitative compositional information um, for a wide variety of solid materials. This technique is uh, complementary to energy dispersive spectroscopy uh, in that uh, WDS spectrometers have significant significantly higher spectral resolution and enhanced quantitative potential. Um, WD WDS um, is used for non-destructive quantitative analysis um, of spots as small as a few, a few uh, micrometers at low detection levels and for elements from atomic number five, um, and also five and higher, um, it is possible um, to work with natural and synthetic solid materials like, for example, minerals, glasses, tooth animal, semiconductors, ceramics, metals, and even more. Um, the high spatial resolution of this technique not only allows um, quantitative analysis uh, to be performed on small phases, but also um, detect chemical zoning on a small scale with a material when compared yeah, to, uh, within a material. And uh, when compared, um, EDS, WDS exhibits, exhibits um, superior peak resolution of elements and sensitivity of, a trace, of trace elements. Um, the advantages and um, disadvantages of EDS and WDS are listed in uh, this table where you can see that in general um, the advantages of EDS are that this technique is a fast method to obtain analysis results of compositional mapping of multiple uh, elements in full energy range. For the disadvantages for EDS, um, we have an inferior energy resolution with worse peak to background ratio and worse detection limit. Coming to the advantages of WDS, the superior energy resolution is for sure better detection limit and better peak to background um, ratio. Um, due to the advantages, um, this method has his disadvantages like the slow acquisition to the single element mapping and the limited uh, energy range. Um, the parallel beam spectrometer uses an X-ray optic um, pos pos <laughs> positioned close. Pos oh my God. <laughs> Is posing close to the sample and convert a divergent uh, beam of X-rays from point source to a parallel beam of X-ray directed at the Bragg diffractor. It uses the principle of total X-ray um, reflection at small um, incidence angles to accomplish this. The optics um, used um, can be grading incidence de de devices or polycapillaries, and the cones are useful in the low energy region of the X-ray spectrum, while the polycapillaries can be used um, to 10 uh, kilo electron volts and above. Because the X-ray beam is parallel, flat diffracting crystals can be used to analyze the energy spectrum of the beam. The critical um, angle is an important parameter which uh, depends on the material um, of the mirror and uh, the energy of the X-rays. Um, the possibility um, of different designs for the mirror in the WDS um, is described in the next two slides. Um, the one is the high collecting optics design for the mirrors uh, where we have three rings um, with different radius and the reflection of the X-rays at specific energy ranges. And the alternative design is related to the curve, uh, curved uh, crystal um, spectrometer. Um, the Johansson geometry along the 
along uh, the Roland circle for the Bragg conditions met at all points. The crystal must uh, first be bent to a radius of a 2R, uh, where R is a radius of the Roland circle, then ground to a radius of R, but this requires um, slits. Um, the advantages um, for the high collecting, uh, high collection uh, optics are listed uh, on this slide and on the left column, the feature and on the right column, the advantages um, of these options uh, are shown. A higher sensitivity shows a better um, detection limit and shorter acquisition times. Um, the meaning for using flat crystal instead of curved uh, ones gave more choice um, for optimizing the performance um, of the crystal material. And the compact design of the detector is an advantage for a user-friendly application and optional simultaneous use of EDS and or EBSD. So um, the Lambda uh, WDS system facilities uh, facilitates uh, capturing the highest um, spectral resolution and count rates available, improving quantification and detection limit, and resolving most peak overlaps of elements, um, optimize for energy and uh, transition elements energies from 100 um, electron volts to 16,000 um, electron volts with a high uh, signal um, intensity and the integration um, of EDS and EBSD additional to the WDS um, is also um, possible. Um, the Lambda um, The Lambda w, uh, WDS spectrometer, spectrometer um, have two different modules. Um, so we have the, or we produce um, the Lambda Plus um, for analysis um, of transition elements uh, with a polycapillary optics and uh, an energy range from 150 electron volts to uh, 10 uh, kilo electron volts, and the uh, lambda super for analysis of low energy and trans transition um, elements with a high um, collecting optics and a low energy um, and the poly polycapillary optics. Um, with an extended energy range um, of uh, 100 electron volts um, to 15 kilo electron volts. So um, with this slide, um, I want to finish my talk and uh, will thank you very much for your attention and um, for questions, uh, feel free um, to ask. Thank you. Alan, we have one question in the chat mm -hmm. um, asking uh, what is the lateral resolution of the tool? And I'm not sure if that was referring to the Murano or the Octane yeah. Elite. Yeah. And who um, asked the question because um, for the Murano, um, see the Ah, what is the electronization of the tool? This, how, uh, this device man on the call because um, um, we are able um, to detect um, for the elite um, for the EDS detector to um, to the element boron. So, um, if uh, this uh, is replies um, the question uh, for the Murano, um, 
I don't think that it is related to the Murano um, heating stage uh, because um, for this, um, the yeah, the Murano heating stage is uh, limited uh, to uh, 950 degrees uh, or for heating till 950 degrees. Um, and um, yeah. Well, I think the lateral resolution depends very much on the microscope, the type yeah. of microscope and the density of the material. So this question is not uh, uh, related to, 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 to answer with a specific number now in terms of the lateral resolution. It's very much microscope dependent. Other questions? Well, seems that there are no further no questions. More questions yeah. Yes, then um, I will thank you all for uh, attending um, the presentation and um, please visit our booth uh, and for further question you can email us. Are there, I think there is a question maybe. Um, hello, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, so it's easy maybe <laughs> to ask yes, you from here. I, sure. I I was trying to arrange my microphone. That's why uh, <laughs> last minute I kept. Um, uh, so I'm joining uh, from uh, Germany, Aalen University. My name is Pinar. Thank you for the nice uh, presentation. Uh, I have a, a small question about the uh, the heating uh, stage. So the sample holder. Uh, I'm wondering whether um, it's possible to use uh, this. Uh, holder for air sensitive materials like load the sample inside of the glow box and then um, use also the holder as a transfer shuttle I would say and then insert it into uh, the microscope and heat it up open the yeah. lock and so on yeah um, so maybe I can show you again um, do you use um, air sensitive materials? Yes. <laughs> OK, um, so I can again show you how the heating stage look lo looks like. So um, as you can see here, um, we have this um, two um, heating stage stages for the SEM and this part of uh, the stage is uh, movable. So you can uh, put it out and fix your sample here above, so means you can um, put this part of the Murano stage uh, into the glove box, prepare your sample. Uh, I don't know how you um, transfer it then to the SEM if you have, uh, um, yeah, how to say, uh, also a short chamber uh, on your SEM. I think it's uh, possible to have um, a chamber which is evacuated and you can transfer then this short part um, of your um, Murano heating stage into this um, chamber and then transfer it to the SEM. OK, so that was a kind of like the, the question also. I mean, do you have like some sort of like a chamber? So is it evacuated in the uh, in the holder or not? But yeah, so we need an additional. Uh, yeah, you need an additional to tool, I think, okay. because yeah. we don't use um, such um, yeah materials. But um, as I know, you have the opportunity opportunity or the possibility to um, have an extra tool on your SEM um, to transfer your air sensitive um, materials um, into, into the SEM. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome.
Yeah. So if there are no um, further questions, thank you all for attending. Visit our booth and have a nice conference. Thank you.